Hi, let's talk meditation. So I wanted to put together just a little standard guide for beginning meditators or intermediate meditators who want to deepen their practice just a little bit. And so I want to go over body position, breathing, and a couple of other tips that will make your meditation a lot more enjoyable as well as perhaps a, a bit more uh, present and deep. So the main thing is body position. So I want to talk about seated body position if you're in a chair or on a couch and then down on the floor body position. So we'll start up here. The main thing is feet flat on the ground. No crossed legs, no crossed arms. So that won't work. All right, that's not going to work. Just feet nice flat on the ground. My legs are straight out in front of me. My, my knees aren't up above me or down below. My legs are nice and straight. So I've put a couple of pillows here to sit on because if I didn't, my butt would be way down in the couch and my knees would be way up above me and that's not a great position. So you want your legs nice and straight, feet flat on the ground, spine straight. So rather than leaning back like this, if I were to lean back like this, I guarantee I'd be asleep within about five minutes. So you know, I really want to bring an, an, an attention to my meditation and find a body position that's strong, that's solid, that's honoring of the meditative practice. So my spine is nice and straight. My head is resting squarely on top of my shoulders. And what I mean by that is what it's not doing is it's not forward because the head is a really heavy thing. So if my chin is kind of out, jutted out, I'm, I'm holding up my head, it's taking a lot of energy. So tuck the chin back and rock the head back and that puts the head squarely on top of the shoulders. So I've got fl flat feet, straight legs and my head uh, straight spine and my head sitting squarely on top of my shoulders. All right, uh, we'll talk about hand position when I move down to the floor as well as the breathing. That's pretty much it for seating in a chair or on a couch. I don't recommend meditating in bed. It's just really hard to get a good position. I don't recommend at all meditating lying down. You can do guided visualizations lying down, but for a, a really solid meditative practice, I really recommend a nice upright uh, position. Okay, let's move down to the ground here. So, a couple of things here. One is this beautiful thing. This is called the Zafu. This is a meditation cushion. It is a buckwheat filled like buckwheat holes, uh, and it's filled with those. It's got a little zipper, so I can unzip it and take some out if it's too thick or put some in if I want to thicken it up a little bit. I also meditate on a soft cushion because when my legs are crossed, I don't want my ankles kind of grinding into the hard ground like that. I want them sitting on a nice soft cushion. So I've got a meditation uh, a pad and a meditation cushion. All right, you can use this meditation cushion a couple of different ways. One of the ways is like this. If your knees get, get a, a sore sitting in cross-legged position, you can take your Zafu and put it on its end like that, and you can actually, and they make little meditation benches for this as well, I can sit on my Zafu in this position, and that's ultra comfortable. I could sit like this for hours and hours. So that's a beautiful thing to do with your Zafu. Other than that, you just put your Zafu nice and flat like that, and then find whatever leg position works for you. Here's the leg position that works for me. I'm not super flexible, so I don't sit in lotus position, which is where my feet are up on my thighs. Um, I'm never going to be that flexible. I'm not going to try to be that flexible. I'm not going to beat myself up for not being that flexible. So what I do is I sit with my legs not crossed, but with my ankles in alignment. So that's my leg position. The hand position is with palms facing up, and the typical mudra or hand position is to have the index finger touching the thumbs, like this. However, I tend to have my middle finger touching my thumbs. That works for me. Find what works for you. It's your meditation practice, so find what works for you. Um, another hand position is to put your hands in your lap. My lap forms a nice little shelf here. My right hand is on top of my left hand, my thumbs touching, and that's a beautiful hand position. So um, let's talk about breathing. Uh, open the back of the throat. I tend to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Some people in through the nose, out through the mouth. 
I really enjoy in through the nose, out through the nose. It's just a nice even breath with the even depth and duration to the breath. In order to open the back of the throat to accommodate that, one tip is to take the tip of your tongue and put it against the bottom of your, or the inside of your bottom teeth. So the tip of the tongue against the inside of the bottom teeth, that tends to open up the throat beautifully. And then the air can just pass nice through a big open throat down into the body and back out with ease. One way to test if your throat really is truly open is breathe in and out through the nose, and then switch and start breathing in and out through the mouth and see if the back of the throat has to change position or shape at all. Ideally, it shouldn't have to. Breathing in and out through the mouth or the nose, the back of the throat shouldn't change shape at all. So you can practice that and see if the back of the throat stays in the same position or openness even when you switch from nose to mouth. Once you know you have a nice open throat, go back to in and out through the nose. Sometimes it works out well to bring a little bit more emphasis to the in-breath. So one way you can, like a little bit more, um, yeah, just emphasis to the in-breath and then let the out-breath flow. One way to think about that is think about one of those hand pumps you see out on the farms where if you're pulling the handle up, drawing the water up out of the ground, there's a little bit of resistance. You got to give a little bit extra effort to draw the breath up or draw the water up and then just let it flow out. Draw it up, let it flow out. So you can breathe, bring that to your breathing as well where the in-breath just has a little bit extra emphasis coming in and then just let it easily flow out. All right, so that's breath, that's body position, that's hand position. All right, so I'm not going to go into right now of a lot of the different techniques one can use for calming the monkey mind and calming the thoughts. This is mainly about kind of technique here, the body position and technique. A couple of other tips. Water. Have water nearby. You might come out of your meditation and you might want to sit for another 20 minutes or so uh, after your meditation doing some journaling. It's good to have some hydration right nearby. You'll notice that I do have a pad of paper and a pen. The reason is twofold. One, when I come out of my meditation, I often do like to journal, so I want to have that available. Secondly, Sometimes during my meditation, a thought will come that's a really precious thought, something I want to remember later, something I want to work on or contemplate later. So rather than try to hold that and not forget it in my mind while I'm meditating, and that keeps the mind occupied up in the head rather than in the body, I'll just pick up my notepad in the middle of my meditation, pick up my notepad, take a note, put it back down, right back into my breath and my meditation. Some might say that interrupts my meditation. I find that that, that thought that's kind of being pernicious in my, in my mind, that interrupts it more. I want to purge that thought onto a pad of paper and drop back into my meditation, letting it go, knowing that I've captured it and I can come back to it for contemplation later on. Uh, I t set a timer when I meditate, especially in the morning. Uh, if I'm going to meditate for 20 minutes, my iPhone has a beautiful app on it, and I just set the app for 20 minutes, got a nice little meditative tone at the end of the 20 minutes. That way I don't have to be worrying about, have I gone over the 20 minutes? Is it 20 minutes yet? I'm not thinking about that. I know that that's already taken care of. All right. I think that's it. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Shoot me an email. I'd be happy to, to communicate with you about this. Enjoy your meditative practice. Be easy with yourself. Be kind with yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. It is a practice. And my meditative practice has changed dramatically over the years. So allow it to be what it is. Allow it to unfold. Allow it to find its way. And uh, practice. And be patient and be persistent and enjoy. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.